Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner, brought to you by the Rogers Corporation. Today's topic, how does glass weave affect millimeter wave PCB performance? Now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod and I'm a technical marketing manager for Rogers Corporation. Today I'm going to be talking about how glass weave affects millimeter wave PCB performance. Now, as you probably know, glass weave and woven glass are used to uh, mechanically uh, rigidize a substrate, and it's pretty necessary with a lot of different types of laminates. However, millimeter wave frequencies, the laminates are generally thin, which means there's usually just one layer of glass, or if there's more than one layer of glass, it's usually very thin glass. But this glass weave does have an effect on DK performance at millimeter wave frequencies, or it certainly can, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. The glass weave that's used to make this woven glass fabric is actually called E-glass, and E-glass has a dielectric constant of about 6. And the dielectric constant I'm going to refer to as DK typically in this presentation, but also it could be referred to as relative permittivity or, or epsilon sub r. So that's uh, the term dielectric constant that I'm going to use. Now there's many different styles of glass that's used to support these laminates, and uh, let's go ahead and look at a few styles that are used in the industry. Shown here are three different glass styles commonly used in the industry, and uh, they are thin glass, so these are pretty uh, commonly used in the industry for millimeter wave laminates or thin laminates. And the upper left glass is shown a 106 glass style, and that is considered open weave and balanced. The 1080 glass is uh, to the right. That's also open weave but unbalanced. The term of balanced and unbalanced refers to the glass density on the x-axis compared to the y-axis. So it does not necessarily mean the geometry of the glass bundles are the same on one axis versus the other for balanced. It means how much density is glass of glass is on one axis versus the other. And then finally, the bottom picture of the 1080 glass, that's a spread glass, and that's also considered balanced. You can see in the case of the spread glass, there are no openings, and that can be very advantageous for um, avoiding issues with the glass weave effect. There are several different ways that the glass weave effect can affect dielectric constant and how the circuit would perceive dielectric constant. Now, if you look at a very small area of a laminate that has the glass weave, uh, what you can find is in a very small area you can have big differences in dielectric constant due to the glass weave and the glass weave pattern. So let's take a look at this in a little more detail. The picture that I'm showing here is uh, a picture of glass, uh, I believe this is a 1080 glass, and it is an open weave glass as you can see, and I uh, may need to use your imagination a little, but basically if you look from a top view straight down onto a circuit where you have a signal conductor on top, ground plane at the bottom, uh, that's actually been removed, and also the resin system that holds everything together has been removed, or let's assume that it's clear anyway. And what you can see, if you look at any one of these areas I have pointed out with arrows, that in the areas with the blue arrows, and specifically, specifically where the arrow heads are pointing, that's areas where bundles cross on one direction, bundles in the other direction. So you basically have two layers of glass in that area. In that area, the dielectric constant will be higher because glass has a dielectric constant about six. And then to the right of that, the yellow arrows, that's pointing to areas where there's glass bundles only and just one layer of glass. So it's going to be a little lower dielectric constant than the glass knuckles. And then finally, the green arrows are pointing to areas where there is no glass. That's an open area of the weave. And in that area, there would just be resin only. And typically, the resin is going to be much lower in dielectric constant. So if the dielectric constant of the laminate, overall dielectric constant of the laminate, is meant to be 3 for dielectric constant, which is pretty common with millimeter wave applications, then the resin system must be much less than 6, which the glass is, and normally it's down around 2.1 to 2.5 for dielectric constant, depending on the formulation and how much glass is used. How the glass weave pattern and how the circuit pattern interact is usually from alignment, and uh, they can align in such a way where the dielectric constant of the circuit can be altered due to the alignment of the circuit to the glass. And there's really two different uh, categories to think about. One is a local trace uh, environment, and the other is a periodic decay variation. And let's go ahead and take a look at a uh, picture of this and explain it a little further. Shown here on the left is a top view of a glass weave pattern and laid over it is signal conductors, assuming a microstrip structure and ground plane being on the bottom, uh, which is not shown in this picture. Uh, the glass weave is the uh, gray grid pattern and then the conductors are kind of a ghosting uh, yellow pattern. And you can see I have one of these conductors labeled as high decay and that's the conductor that's aligned to the glass weave pattern in such a way that it's right over the top of a run of bundles, knuckles, bundles, knuckles, bundles, knuckles of the glass weave pattern. 
And then to the right of that is a conductor that's aligned over an area where it's open areas of the glass and then bundles area and then open, bundle, open, bundle. And because of that, the trace on the right that is labeled low decay, that will have a lower dielectric constant than the trace on the left of high decay. And considering these two circuits would be on the same, um, on the exact same material and the same circuit, they can actually have very different dielectric constant performance and especially at millimeter wave frequencies where the wavelengths are very small and more sensitive to these decay differences. To the right of this is shown the same type of configuration except it's a cross-sectional view. So you can see that the conductor over the bundle knuckle area is uh, actually over two layers of glass and then the conductor over the bundle open area is just over one layer of glass. The periodic decay variation is probably more of a problem at millimeter wave frequencies than is the local trace environment. Now I say that because I've looked at a lot of different circuits in many studies that I've done and it seems like that's more of an influence on affecting millimeter wave performance than the local trace environment. Now to illustrate that further, let me go ahead and show you some drawings and explain this concept a little further. As shown in this picture is a top view of 106 glass with different arrangements of uh, how the conductor is aligned to the glass weave. And the left side of it is the local trace environment, which we've already talked about. And then on the right side is the periodic decay variation that I think is a bigger concern for millimeter wave. And actually what you get is a uh, kind of a zipper effect where you have high decay, low decay, high decay as you move down the trace length. And how that happens is in the area that I have circled as high decay, the conductor is actually going over a region of uh, bundles and knuckles, so it's bundle, knuckle, bundle, knuckle. Then as you move up to trace a little bit farther, now the conductor is aligned to the glass weave in such a way that it's over open, bundle, open, bundle, and that means a lower decay. Now what happens is at millimeter wave frequencies with very small wavelengths, this difference of high and low decay in a periodic fashion uh, can, cause a, can cause resonances and even spurious modes to occur. And this can be uh, pretty problematic at higher frequencies such as millimeter wave frequencies. Several months ago I did a very thorough study on glass weave effect looking at several different glass styles which I've already shown here, the 106, 1080 and the 1078 glass. And I put this together in a microstrip format and looked at uh, the influence of these circuits with different alignments to the glass weave pattern for its influence at uh, millimeter wave frequencies. So the following slide is going to give more information on that. Shown here is some information uh, from the study that we did uh, a few months ago on the glass weave pattern and really what we were looking at was the local trace environment because that is something that we could capture very accurately. And it was a very time consuming and tedious work because basically what we did is on one panel we made a lot of circuits, uh, about 80 circuits, and we inspected every one of them uh, looking for the exact alignment that we wanted. And for one panel we had to find one circuit that had the perfect alignment for the knuckle bundle configuration and another circuit on that same panel as bundle open configuration. If we could not find those two circuits in the same panel, we discarded the panel and moved on to the next. So it took a long time to find the ideal circuits to capture this effect. But we were able to do that. Now let me explain the test vehicle and the materials quickly. The test vehicle was a microstrip transmission line that in the signal launch area was 50 ohms and then we made impedance transformers to transform it to 75 ohms and we did that to make sure the conductor width was very narrow and much smaller than the bundle open areas so you could get a good uh, resolution of this glass weave effect. And then the other thing was the, uh, the, the laminate itself was made up of PTFE and glass only. So there was no filler. So this is an unfilled system that was very thin, four mils thick, with no filler whatsoever, and glass and a pure resin system. That's also a worst case scenario for exaggerating the glass weave effect. We also use rolled copper. The reason we use rolled copper is because we know that copper surface roughness impacts performance, especially at millimeter wave frequencies. And rolled copper is so smooth that whatever variation there could be from one batch of copper to the other will be extremely small and will not impact the influence when we're looking at multiple different circuits and comparing them. So the data that I'm showing here is a table of information and it's looking at these uh, different circuits that we built on three different laminates. The laminates we're using 106, 1078, and 1080 glass. And uh, what we were doing was we're comparing the circuit on the same panel that had the knuckle bundle orientation to the glass and then another circuit again on the same panel with the bundle open configuration and comparing the differences that we saw in group delay, propagation delay, and phase angle. I personally think phase angle is the most accurate way to look at this. So that's actually the numbers I'm going to be looking at. 
And on the table of the upper table on the right hand column where it says 77 gigahertz phase angle, the first one for the circuits built on the 106 glass, that is 100 degrees phase angle and that's the difference between the conductor over the knuckle bundle run compared to the conductor over the bundle open run. And 100 degrees phase angle at 77 gigahertz, if it's automotive radar, that's a significant difference and that could be a very, uh, very big concern actually. Now the next glass style, the 1078, that's the spray glass and as you remember there's no openings there. It does still have knuckles on one uh, axis but it is spread glass on the other axis. So you can see the glass weave effect is really minimized there so the difference of these uh, two different conductors using the 1078 glass is minimal. It's about 20 degrees phase angle at uh, 77 gigahertz. And uh, for the radar sensors, that's actually pretty tolerable. That's not a, that's not a bad number. And then finally, the last circuits that were built on 1080 glass, open weave and unbalanced. That's actually a worst case scenario where we saw a phase angle difference of 149 degrees. And for radars operating at 77 gigahertz, that's a very substantial number and should be avoided. Um, the bottom table of inf information is actually the same testing, except in this case we extracted the dielectric constant and showed comparisons of dielectric constant differences of the same orientation. And you can look through those numbers. This concludes this episode of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you're not already a member, join the Rogers Technical Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more Rogers Corporation informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Raj mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.